we have been talking about attacking systems, we've been talking about, well, what can go wrong, but what does it actually mean if something is broken? Or what does it mean to be secure? Now, some requirements are kind of obvious. So if you have public key crypto systems, and even the introductory lecture, I was saying that it should be hard to recover the pub private key from the public key. So since the public key should be published, of course, one should be able to get the private key from it. Similarly, for encryption, it shouldn't be possible to get the plain text from the ciphertext. Or in the signature system, it should be hard to forge a signature. But what abilities do we actually give to the attacker? What does the attacker want? So this lecture deals with formal security notions for public key cryptography. So for signatures, the attacker's goal could be, well, the, the total break that I mentioned. So recovering the private key from the public key. So no signature needed, just seeing the public key, say for RSA, they could factor, for other systems they could undo the hard function that protects the secret key. And if they can do that, then the whole system is broken. So we speak of a total break. But it would also be a very bad signature system if the attacker could produce signatures that are valid, even though they haven't been produced by the secret key. So we speak of a forgery if it's a signature which has been made without the involvement of a private key. And we speak of universal unforgeability or universal forgery um, if the attacker can produce signatures on any message. So when you see a UU as an abbreviation, that means universal unforgeability, meaning that the attacker should not be able to produce forgeries on attacker chosen messages. Now, a slightly relaxed criterion is that of existential unforgeability which means that the attacker shouldn't be able to get any new signature. So create any forgery on anything. So no, no constraint on the signature on the message that's chosen, and the message might not make sense, but it should even for a good system not be possible to create any such forgery. So a good system we want that it has existential unforgeability. Now, the attacker abilities also differ. So sometimes the attacker only sees the public key. So then we speak of the key-only attack. If the, uh, if the attacker gets to see some messages, so he sees a message and a signature, some pairs of a valid signature on a message, now the attacker can always verify that the uh, signature is valid, um, but if, if they have these pairs, then we speak of a known message attack. So the attacker knows what message went into there, but didn't have any control over this. So basically the attacker sees something that you have signed and then uses this in his attack. So that's when we speak of known message attack, so KMA. And then finally, an even more powerful attacker could just be allowed to request signatures on any message they like. So I've been saying sometimes, hey, in the RSA scenario with the um, hash function collision, they could fool you into signing something which looks sufficiently innocent. They ask, hey, could you give me an autograph? And you have to sign. Similarly, you could give a cryptographic autograph, or you have an automated server which has some policy of approving most signatures. So most messages would be signed, and then the attacker could really get a whole bunch of messages signed. Now, this only makes sense if the attacker afterwards has to output a new signature. So the universal forgeability and the existential forgeability both require that this is a message which hasn't been signed. So if the attacker has KMA or CMA abilities, then the message has to be a fresh one that the attacker produces, or the forgery has to be on a fresh message. Now for encryption, similarly the attacker goals could be to undo the uh, secret key or the, get the private key from the public key, or to undo the encryption function. So the encryption function should be a one-way function. So the ciphertext should be hiding completely what the message was. And if the attacker can recover the message from the ciphertext, then the attacker breaks one-wayness. And then the last property is called semantic security. And it's kind of a vague property. It says, well, the attacker should want to learn any information about the plaintext, anything. 
Was it a number? Was it a hex digit? Was it larger than five? Any such information would be an attacker goal and well, systems should resist this. Now this is hard to formulate but luckily, there's an equivalent security notion which is called indistinguishability. And the way that that is uh, defined is that the attacker gets to choose two messages. So the attacker can do whatever he wants, pick M0, M1, and then give those to the person, the challenger we call them. So to another person, the challenger secretly figures out which one he wants to pick. So he flips a bit, say, gets zero. And then he sends back the encryption of M0. Or maybe he got M1 and sends back the encryption of M1 under the public key that everybody knows. Now, of course, I mean, it's, it's two messages, so the um, attacker has 50% chance of guessing. So the attack, the indistinguishability attack, is seen as the advantage beyond those 50% chance of guessing. And also here, the attacker has different abilities. So, for instance, the attacker gets encryption of plain text of his choice. Now in a public key settings that he can just do in the privacy of his own home. So the attacker can just sit there with a public key and encrypt something. And then, well, that's the ability. In a symmetric key setting, chosen plain text attacks would be you have this box in front of you and you can encrypt. In the public key setting, CPA is a very weak attacker. Now, chosen cyber text attack, so CCAs um, 1 and 2, in that case, the attacker can actually ask for decryption of ciphertexts. So in that case, um, the attacker need not know what message was encrypted, but can interact with something that gives him decryptions. And the difference between the one and the two model here is that in the second model, the attacker can continue asking for decryption after it has received such, like in an indistinguishability game, the attacker receives a challenge, C, the ciphertext there, and then the attacker can continue asking questions. And in CCA1, the attacker can only ask such decryption questions before it gets the, the challenge. So these are, in short, the security notions um, that we have for public key cryptography. And in the fourth, so in the RSA, problems with schoolbook RSA number three, you'll see several of these being used in practice.